Chapter 4 of the Boy Scouts Along the Susquehanna. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Airplane Boys Among the Clouds by Herbert Carter. Chapter 4. Giraffe Admits that the Shoe Fits. Look out, Bumpus, shrieked Davy Jones as though instantly realizing what a perilous position the stout scout would be in if that angry cow succeeded in bowling him over with her hornless head. "'Run, run, Bumpus, a wild bull is after you!' shouted Step Hen, who may have really believed what he was saying with such a vim, or else considered that by magnifying the danger he might add more or less to the sprinting ability of the said Bumpus. There was really little need to send all these warnings peeling over the field, because Bumpus had already glimpsed the oncoming enemy and was in full flight. At the moment of discovery he chanced to be fully two-thirds of the way over to the tree which had been the special object of his attention. It was therefore much easier for him to reach this haven of refuge than it would have been to dash for the fence with any hope of making that barrier. "'Go it, Bumpus, I'll bet on you,' howled Giraffe, jumping up on the fence in his great excitement, so that he might not miss seeing anything of the amusing affair." Now, possibly the angry cow that had been bereft of her beloved calf by a late-night visit of the butcher might have readily overhauled poor Bumpus had she kept straight on without a stop, for she could cover two yards to his one. For some reason which only a cow or bull could understand, the animal seemed to consider it absolutely necessary that with every few paces she must come to a halt and paw the ground again, sending the earth flying about her. That gave the stout runner his chance, and so he succeeded in gaining the tree, with his four-footed enemy still a little distance away. Bumpus was evidently unnerved. He had seen that terrifying spectacle several times as he looked anxiously over his fat shoulder, and it had always caused him to put on an additional spurt. When finally he banged up against the tree, having of course stumbled as usual, his one idea was to climb with lightning speed. His agreement with the scheming giraffe called for an ascent of sixty seconds, but he now had good reason for desiring to shorten this limit exceedingly. He doubtless imagined that he would feel the crash of that budding head against his person before he had ascended five feet, and this completely rattled him. Left to himself, and possibly he could have climbed the smooth trunk within the limit of time specified in his arrangement with giraffe, but such was his excitement now that he made a sorry mess of it. The boys were shrieking all sorts of instructions to him to hurry up, for he was bound to become a victim, one that was begging with tears in his eyes to get a move on him, while another warned Bumpus of the near approach of the oncoming cow, and also the fact that she had fire in her eyes. Twice did the scout manage to get part way up, when in his tremendous excitement he lost his grip, and in consequence slipped down again, amid a chorus of hollow groans from the watchers beyond the fence. The avenging cow was now close up, and still enjoying the situation, as was evidenced by the way she made the earth fly. She could be heard giving a series of strange moaning sounds particularly terrifying. At least Bumpus evidently thought so, for after his second fall he just sat there and stared at the oncoming enemy as if he had actually lost his wits. Get behind the tree, Bumpus! That was Thad shouting, and using both his hands in lieu of any better megaphone. Now, since that had always been the leader of the patrol ever since its formation, Bumpus was quite accustomed to obeying any order which the other might give. Doubtless he recognized the accustomed authority in those tones, at any rate, it was noticed that he once more began to make a move, struggling to his feet in his usual clumsy way. "'Oh, he just missed getting stuck!' ejaculated Smithy, as they saw Bumpus move around the tree, and heard a loud crash when the head of the charging cow smashed against the covering object. The animal was apparently somewhat stunned by the contact, for she stood there looking a little groggy, as Giraffe called it. Had Bumpus known enough to remain perfectly still, and allow the tree to shelter him the best it could, all might have gone well, but something that may have been boyish curiosity impelled the fat scout to thrust out his head. Why, he had so far recovered from his fright thanks to the substantial aid of that tree trunk, that he actually put his fingers to his nose and wiggled them at the cow. She must have seen him do it, and immediately resented the implied insult, for all of a sudden she was seen to be in motion again. There was a flash of dun-colored sides, and around the tree the cow sped, 
chasing Bumpus ahead of her. Of course, the scout did not have to cover as much ground as the animal, but the fact must be remembered that he was a very clumsy fellow and apt to trip over his own feet when excited, so that the danger of his falling a victim to the rage of the mother cow was as acute as ever, despite the sheltering tree. Giraffe seemed to be enjoying the game immensely. He sat there, perched on the rail fence, and clapped his hands with glee, while shouting all manner of brotherly advice at Bumpus. This, of course, fell on deaf ears, because just then the imperiled scout could think only of one thing at a time, and that was to keep out of reach of that battering ram. Thad knew that something must be done to help Bumpus, who, if left to his own resources, never would be able to extricate himself from the bad fix into which he had stumbled, thanks to that love of a joke on the part of Giraffe and his own blindness. Hi there, Bumpus. She thinks you look like the butcher that took her calf away. That's what's the matter, cried Step Hen. Pity you ain't a cowpuncher, Bumpus, Giraffe went on to say, because then you could throw that poor thing easy. Huh, think I could do it with one hand. Then suppose you get off that fence and do it, said Thad severely. You got poor old Bumpus in that hole, and it ought to be your business to rescue him. Giraffe looked dubious. When he spoke so confidently about believing himself able to down the raging cow, he certainly could not have meant it. Oh, he ain't going to get hurt, Thad, he started to say. If I saw him knocked down, of course I'd jump and run to help him. The exercise ought to do Bumpus good, for he's been putting on too much flesh lately, you know. You'll have to excuse me, Thad. Sure you will. I'll go in if things look bad for him, but I hate to break up the game now by interfering. Thad paid no more attention to Giraffe since he knew that the other's inordinate love of practical joking made him blind to facts that as a true scout he should have kept before his mind. Hello, Bumpus, the patrol leader once more shouted. Yes, Thad, what is it? came back in a wheezy voice, for to tell the truth Bumpus was getting pretty well winded by now, thanks to the rapid manner in which he had to navigate around that tree again, with the active bovine in pursuit. Take off that red bandana from your neck and put it in your pocket, ordered the patrol leader. Strange to say no one else, saving possibly the artful giraffe, had once considered this glaring fact, that much of the cow's anger was excited by seeing the hated color so prominently displayed by the boy who had invaded the pasture at such an unfortunate time in her life of frequent bereavements. Taking it for granted that Bumpus would obey the first chance he had to unfasten the knot by which his big bandana was secured around his neck, Thad clambered over the fence and started to run. He did not head directly for the tree around which this exciting chase was being carried on, but obliquely. In doing this, Thad had several reasons, no doubt. First of all, he was more apt to catch the attention of the angry cow, for he was waving his own red handkerchief wildly as he ran, and doing everything else in his power to attract notice. Then, if he did succeed in luring the animal toward him, he would be taking her away from the tree at such an angle that when Bumpus headed for the spot where his other chums were gathered, the cow would not be apt to see him in motion and give chase. Thad knew how to work the thing nicely. He succeeded in attracting the attention of the cow, for he saw her stop in her pursuit of Bumpus and start to pawing the turf again. She's coming, Thad, roared Alan. As he spoke, the cow started on a full run for the new enemy. That flaunting red flag bade her defiance, apparently, and no respectable bovine could refuse to accept such a gauge of battle. Thad had not gone far away from the fence at any time. He was not hankering to play the part of a bull-baiter and run the chance of being tossed high in the air or butted into the ground. He had, like a wise general, also marked out the way of retreat, and when the onrushing animal was fully started so that there seemed to be little likelihood of her stopping short of the fence, Thad nimbly darted along, and just at the proper time he was seen to make a flying leap that landed him on the top rail, from which he instantly dropped to the ground. He continued to flaunt the red handkerchief as close to the nose of the cow as he could, so as to hold her attention while she butted the fence again and again, as only an angry and baffled beast might. Thad was meanwhile again shouting his directions to the dazed Bumpus, who, winded by his recent tremendous exertions, had actually sunk down at the base of the friendly tree as though exhausted. Get moving, Bumpus, was what the patrol leader told him. Back away, and try to keep the tree between the cow and yourself all you can. 
Don't waste a single minute, because she may break away from me and hunt you up again. Get a move on, you Bumpus, do you hear? Finally aroused to a consciousness of the fact that he was not yet out of the woods, so long as no fence separated him from that fighting cow, Bumpus started in to obey the directions given by the leader of the Silver Fox Patrol. It was no difficult matter to back away, keeping at a line that would allow the tree to cover him, and the fat scout in this manner drew steadily closer to where his comrades awaited him. He was near the fence when the cow must have discovered him again, for the first thing Bumpus knew he heard Davy shrieking madly. Run like everything, Bumpus! Whoop! Here she comes, lickety-split after you! To the fence and we'll help you over, Bumpus! Come on! Come on! Which Bumpus was, of course, doing the best he knew how, not even daring to look over his shoulder for fear of being petrified by the awful sight of that monster charging after him and appearing ten times as big as she really was. Arriving at the fence, he found Davy and Giraffe awaiting him, for the latter, possibly arriving at the repentance stage, had begun to realize that a joke may often be very one-sided, and that what is fun for the boys is death to the frogs. Assisted by their willing arms, the almost breathless fat scout was hustled over the fence. There was indeed little time to spare. Hardly had Davy and Giraffe managed to follow after him, so that all three landed beyond the barrier, when the baffled bovine arrived on the spot, to bellow with rage as she realized that her intended prey had escaped for good. Bumpus was hardly able to breathe. He was fiery red in the face and quite wet with perspiration. But nevertheless, he looked suspiciously at Giraffe, as though a dim idea might be taking shape in that slow-moving mind of his. "'Oh, no, Bumpus, you don't get that compass this time,' asserted the tall scout, shaking his head in the negative, while he grinned at Bumpus. "'You never climbed the tree at all, you know. Our little wager is off. "'If I thought you knew about that pesky cow, Giraffe, I consider that you played me a low-down trick, said Bumpus between gasps. Giraffe made no reply. Perhaps the enormity of his offense had begun to trouble him, because Bumpus was such a good-natured fellow, with his sunny blue eyes and his willing disposition, that it really seemed a shame to take advantage of his confiding nature. So Giraffe turned aside and amused himself by thrusting his hand, containing his own red bandana, through the openings between the rails of the fence, and tempting the cow to butt at him, when, of course, he would adroitly withdraw from reach in good time. When Bumpus had fully recovered his breath, the march was resumed. Giraffe loitered behind a bit. He knew from the signs that he was in for what he called a hauling over the coals by the patrol leader, and fully expected to see Thad drop back to join him. The sooner the unpleasant episode was over with, the better. That was Giraffe's way of looking at it, and he was really inviting Thad to hurry up and get the scolding out of his system. Sure enough, presently Thad dropped back and joined him. Looking up out of the tail of his eye, Giraffe saw that the other was observing him severely. He fully expected to hear something unpleasant about the duty one scout ought to assume toward his fellows. To his surprise, Thad started on another tack entirely. I want to tell you a little story I read the other day, Giraffe, he said quietly, and if the shoe fits, you can put it on. All right, Thad. You know I like to hear stories first-rate, mumbled Giraffe. Glad at least that the others of the party were far enough ahead so that none of them could hear what passed between himself and the patrol leader. I think, began Thad, it was told to illustrate the old saying that curses, like chickens, come home to roost. A lecturer went on to say that when a boy throws a rubber ball against the wall it bounces back, and unless he is careful, it's apt to take him in the eye. And that's the way everything we do comes back to us at some time or other. Sure thing it does. And perhaps some day, I expect Bumpus will be getting one over on me to pay the score, admitted Giraffe. But Thad did not pay any attention to what he said, only went on with his story. There was once a boy, a thoughtless boy, with a little cruel streak in his makeup, who always wanted to find a chance for a good laugh, without thinking of what pain he might be causing others. Thad went on at which Giraffe winced, for the shaft went home. One day he was playing on a hillside with their big dog Rover. He would roll a stone down the hill, and Rover would obediently run after it and bring it back. He seemed to be enjoying the sport as much as the boy. Then all at once the boy discovered a big hornet's nest almost a foot in diameter, hanging low down on a bush. 
he saw a chance to have a great lark. He would roll a stone so as to hit the nest and send Rover after it. Then the hornets would come raging out, and it would be such a lark to see them chasing poor Rover down the hill. Well, the stone he rolled went true to the mark and came slam against the hornet's nest. Rover was in full pursuit, and he banged up against it, too. Out came a black swarm of furious hornets, and of course they tackled poor Rover like everything. The boy up on the hill laughed until he nearly doubled up to hear Rover yelp and whirl around this way and that. He thought he had never had such a bully time in all his life as just then. Rover was a fine dog, and the boy thought just heaps of him. But then it was so comical to see how he twisted and bit at himself, and he howled so fiercely too that the boy could hardly get his breath for laughing. But all at once he saw to his alarm that poor Rover, unable to help himself, was running up the hill straight to his master as though thinking that the boy could save him. Then the boy stopped laughing. It didn't seem so funny then. And Giraffe, inside of ten seconds there was a boy running madly down the hill, fighting a thousand mad hornets that stung him everywhere, and set him to yelling as if he were half crazy. When he got home finally, and saw his swollen face in the glass, and felt Rover licking his hand as if the good fellow did not dream that his master had betrayed him so meanly, what do you suppose that boy said to himself, if he had any conscience at all? Giraffe looked up. He was as red in the face as any turkey that ever strutted and gobbled. Giraffe at least had a conscience, and his words proved beyond any doubt. Served him right, Thad, that's what I say. And I thank you for telling me that story. It's a hummer, all right, and I won't ever forget it, either, I promise you. It was a cruel joke, and sometime I'm going to make up for playing it. That's all I want to say, Thad. And the wise patrol leader, knowing that it would do Giraffe a lot more good to commune with himself just then, rather than to be taken to task any further, walked away to rejoin Alan, who was at the head of the expedition. Nor did Giraffe make any effort to hasten his footsteps so as to catch up with the rest, until quite some little time had elapsed. End of chapter 4